uh, the snow settles down and I look to see where my buddy is expecting to see him in the exact same spot holding onto a tree and he's gone can't see anything I unzip my coat I pull my beacon out hit receive to see where he is and hold on one sec hey Yeah, so first job, we're headed to Santa Quinn. Apparently it's a store of some sort. They got a fluorescent ballast that's out, and they want a new one. Usually we don't start this late, but this is the on-call week. I guess you get a little bit of solace by sleeping in. Make sure we don't get hit by a car. That'd be a bad day. Yeah, sometimes the bulbs can be loose, but they all feel we, tight, we've so, them. yeah. We, we've done that, we've... Yeah, it's that time. If you just did one, this one's probably dead too. Okay, well, let me write up a couple options for you. To do just one, to do multiples, okay. we'll go from there. So the first one, this is everything we talked about. The two mm -hmm. T8, four bulb ballasts, so one in here, one in the other room. I started working with Wyatt back at Hepworth when I was 19. So and I was figuring out four more years, half my life will be with any hour. Nice. Sort of it's weird to think. <laughs> <laughs> so our on-call week, uh, we usually start later. I know some guys start at their normal nine. I like to sleep in. And so I usually leave the house by about 10 o'clock or depending how far a drive we got, get to the job by 11 and then take calls till essentially the office says you don't have any more. And last night I got home at nine and then the rest of the night you gotta sit there with the anticipation that every text that comes in is a uh, call that you got to stop doing what you're doing and head out. And then you get really mad at your friends when they start just texting you a ton and then you don't know if it's a call or not. So, and Brad's really good at that. <laughs> Ballasts are one of these things. You look at them and it's just a sea of wires everywhere. Flip the light switch. There we go. Okay, those should last you for many more years. So, I'll send this over to you. And if you have any issues, give us a call. So, you bet. Okay, so the next call, we were gonna go to Orem, but then a priority one came in, and so now we get to have a lovely jaunt up the I-15 to West Jordan. We'll be there probably about one o'clock unless we have some exciting traffic. All I know is they have some sparking. They don't like sparking usually isn't a good thing. So, so we'll go find out what's going on. Hello. Hello, how are you? Good, man. How Good, I'm Scott. We got an outlet that connects to our dryer. It starts shooting sparks out of the top where the, the black wire is going in. All the... So every time you turn it on, that's when you get... Yeah, when we try to turn it on, it starts shooting the sparks. Okay, well, we've been lucky that you haven't had bigger issues. You're melting. See oh, how yeah, black yeah. that is? and you've actually been melted the wire back here and it's melted the side of the box. Mm -hmm. I don't okay, know if so you can see big, that in there. Going on for, yeah, um, so that's where we're at right there. Okay. Yeah, the safest thing, I don't want my house to burn <laughs> yeah. down. So. Um, right off the bat, I can tell that there has been water and corrosion coming into the panel. 
Can you see all this rust corrosion in here? We're at 116. And our second one, we're at 120. That's a pretty big gap. We want to be about 120 for both of them. Yep, so this is our meter. So power comes in from the power company up here, comes into here. This is what records how much power we use. And this is our main breaker right here. If we turn this off, it shuts everything off right. inside. It's not pulled out of someone else's house. It's a brand new breaker. Surge protection. We talked about the surge protection, so that's included in the panel. And then extra space. So whatever the world brings us, we have extra space. Yeah, let's just go with option number one. Okay. Got our nice new shiny panel. It's considerably larger than the old one. These are the lock rings that hold the wires and connectors in. Okay, so we're gonna knock out. Oops. Gonna go give them a heads up and turn power off. No power. So you know you got corrosion when the screw is black or brownish color. got caught in an avalanche about six years ago. My buddy and I were, we were doing backcountry and, and it snowed pretty good. And by this time I was getting tired and I happened to look up and I could just see this plume coming towards us. I just yelled, oh crap. It started to hit us and I thought it was a little slough because I've been in a lot of sloughs, but it just kept coming and coming. And my buddy Cody was right in front of me, probably about 15 feet and it just wouldn't stop. It was more and more and more force. And I turned and I was able to grab a tree and hold on to it. And I was on the uphill side and it was coming over my head and just kept crushing me. And I couldn't breathe anymore. And I, I thought I was gonna die. And finally it started to, to relax a little bit and I could inhale. And I expect to see my buddy Cody doing the same thing. And he wasn't there. And his ski pole was hanging in a tree about 20 feet down the, the hill and I yell his name there's no response so I pull my beacon out I don't pick his signal up at all and get uncovered and just start heading down where the slide went and no signal no signal and then finally I pick his beacon up and I'm just in my ski boots at this point because the avalanche took my skis off and I'm running down the slope getting closer 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 within 15 feet got my shovel out and started digging and I finally hit a ski and I was like oh thank god there's a ski and it was my ski and all of a sudden all this doubt in the entire like everything how did my beacon track my ski what's going on and so I keep digging I'm about five feet down I hit a backpack I was like oh finally uncover it okay butt head I uncover his face and first thing I hear is I love you I love you I love you and that was him he was still conscious and it took 45 minutes to get him uncovered to where he could stand up and when it hit us to when got him uncovered was just under 10 minutes and he said he was starting to lose consciousness blacking out and he could hear a weird sound and it was my shovel getting closer to him so we got definitely lucky because if I would have got buried more than I did then we both would have been dead. This is how I tell when I turn the power off. Found it. Tells you if you have electricity or not.
So it's burnt the insulation all the way through. And so that's why it's sparking. The outlet, this wire just broke off in there. And then right here and in, inside the box, it was actually melting. Now we got a message from Troy saying we'd like you to do a ride along. And I said, I rather wouldn't. He said, well, they really want you to. And I said, well, I really don't want to. And then I immediately get a message from Wyatt saying, we really want you to do a ride along. So we're here doing a ride along. Hey, we got light. We got power, no sparks. And heat. I'd say it's working. Now we show and tell. The big box. Yep. The last time. There you go. Cool. So it looks full, but see how these ones are smaller? You can put these smaller ones on. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you it. bet. Sorry you gotta reset all your clocks. Um, well, one down, hopefully not another one to go. Well, I hope you liked being an electrician for a day. We're still on call the rest of the night, so if I get a call, I'm giving you a call. You know, it's really what what's around you, who's around you, and the relationships that you have that matter because it can be taken away in the blink of an eye.